gotten to the end of your project, you're in a place you're happy with where the project's at. I have this paused currently, but we can play it. So I've just got like three video sources that are swapping at a certain amount of time. And then um, you can use the mouse to move basically to slide the those videos around. Um, and oh, and this is a 3D model that I actually put in there as well that's animated. Um, which if you want to add stuff like that, we can look at a quick way to do it using Mixamo. Um, but, right, so I've got some things going on um, and I'm really happy with it. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna be able to record this um, and, uh, and also like record any audio that might be with it. In my case, this doesn't have audio, but I did add just a very basic audio file in object or operator um, because so I can show you how to add things um, correctly um, to, for export. All right, so we've got this, we're happy with it. This is what we wanna do. And so the, the main idea, wow, well, that's kind of creepy, Alexander Graham Bell. Um, but so the thing that um, we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the export dialogue and the export dialogue Request asks you to specify which top, right? Which purple video based um, operator you want to be recording, and then which audio operator you want to be recording. And so, in my case, you'll note I just have this audio file in. It doesn't even have an audio device out, you can't hear it at all. Um, but this is um, what I'm going to use. So um, to start with, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to jump back to frame, um, to the very first frame, frame one, um, just so it starts somewhere. Um, and then if I go up to file at the top of the screen and go down to export movie, it pops up this dialog box. And in this dialog box, there are, as I said, there's these two options here. There's the top video and chop audio. Um, and then there's some settings. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in, which might be helpful for anybody watching. Um, so there's resolution, there's frame rate, there's a codec. By default, mine was set to animation. Um, and this didn't actually work. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. And I think by default, mine was set to one to 600 frames. We'll change that as well. And you'll see it has a file name kind of sort of chosen already, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second too. Okay, so the first step is to, um, with this, your viewer needs to be like inactive or whatever, right? If I lock it like this, then I can't grab it and drag it over here. But if it's unlocked, then I can just go ahead and grab my out one, which is the one I want to use. I'm going to drop it into the top video channel. And you'll see as soon as I do that, it says project one out. And then it shows whatever frame is currently there. And I do the same thing for the audio. And so I'm just going to drag that over and drop it in there. Um, and this audio doesn't go with this video at all. Um, in fact, I should probably set the tempo to the correct tempo for this so that they do sort of match because <laughs> um, it was it's 115 and not 120 okay um, but in your cases the audio may be driving some of the things that are happening um, in my case that's that's not happening I'm just doing some stuff in time okay so I've got those two things set so then um, I'm gonna zoom back in so I can see this um, so I'm in the 1280 by 720, I think, is the maximum you can export with the non-commercial license. Um, I'm going to leave it set to 30 frames per second. And I'm going to change the codec. The one that worked for me, and I'm nervous about this H.264 because it says NVIDIA GPU, which I definitely don't have. Um, so I'm doing MPEG-4 Part 2. Um, Photo Motion JPEG will not record audio. Um, it's, it's basically like it creates an, an, a huge folder full of JPEG images, one per frame, which is really great in terms of image quality. Um, but if you're trying to do audio as well, we're not going to worry about that. MPEG-4 makes our lives a little bit better. 
I'm gonna leave the format it has chosen alone. And this is Apple lossless. If you're on a Windows machine, you probably have a different default audio codec. Um, you could go with MP3 or you could do one of these uncompressed PCM. This is basically a WAV file, if you've seen WAV audio files before. Um, I'm gonna leave it with Apple's lossless because whatever. And then start frame and end frame. Um, that's based on how long your timeline is. You'll note that if I come down here in the bottom corner, we haven't really talked about this, um, but the end is 600 frames. And so it should be mapped to whatever your project is set to. Um, I set it to 900 frames and it actually let me go a little further. We're gonna do one test at, six, at the default and then I'll show you um, some other things. So before I click, start, the last thing I need to do is just come down here to the little file icon and click and actually choose a file name for this video file. I'm going to call this export test two because I already have export test one. I'm going to hit save. And once I've done that, um, if I click on the start button, it should start rendering and I can kind of move this thing around. Um, and then you'll see that it stopped as soon as I got to frame 600, right? 600 frames at 30 frames a second is only 20 seconds long. Um, ideally, we want more than that. And so um, we'll talk about how to do that in a second. If you then click view, at least on my Mac, and I don't know since I'm screen recording if this is going to go well or disappear everything but i'll find out when i look at the video later but if i click view then it pops up this video and if i turn my audio down so i don't blast everyone i don't know where we're at um and maybe turn it down here too um right you can see i've now got this video that plays and if I didn't turn the audio all the way off, although I don't, oh, I think the audio is playing through my computer, yeah. So, right, so the audio is on there and the video is on there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, so if you want it, I found this out on accident just a few minutes ago. If you want it to continue playing for longer and you want to have more time to do this, but you're not sure how long showing off your interaction is going to take, um, I set this to 900 frames. So I just set it to something bigger than um, the default here. And when I went to um, record this, I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. I'm going to overwrite what I did before. Um, if I click start and, oh yeah, if you want to overwrite it, it basically says, do you want to overwrite? And you say, yes. Okay. And so now um, as it plays through, you'll notice that it keeps cycling back over. Like if you look at the play head down at the bottom, it's going up to 600 and then it's continuing along and recycling and looping and looping and there's this guy walking very quickly. You'll also notice, right, it's playing back insanely fast, like much faster than it plays back um, when I'm looking at it. However, once we get done with this, it'll do. Okay, so then it's like, okay, so now I need to stop this. So I'm just gonna come down, I'm gonna hit stop. And now if I go ahead and view this, you'll see that it's actually two minutes and 15 seconds long, right? So I've sort of tricked it into just recording endlessly until I tell it to stop. Um, and it should again, yeah, should have a whole lot more minutes of things now um, of that test of interaction. <laughs> And yeah, because I set the tempo slower, um, every, he's even marching in time, which is kind of great. Um, okay, so um, yeah. So that is how you export your project. So 
in terms of what I want you to turn in for this project, it will be um, the um, exported video of it functioning. It needs to be a minimum of 30 seconds long. However, if you need more time for your project to um, like to do the thing, if it looks cooler in more than 30 seconds, then a minute, two minutes, whatever, you know, we don't, 10 minutes is gonna be like a pain in the butt to upload the canvas and all of that. So I would say just like maybe maximum two minutes. Um, and then uh, I also am gonna want the file. And um, early on, um, we talked about this, but when you, there's a way you can save a project where you can, um, where is it? Where you can go to the very top option and say create project folder. Um, and when you do that, it will take your project um, and you can tell it where you want that folder to go and what, um, what, fol what media folders it should include with that. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Um, I think this is in the right spot. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And I don't know if it's taken the, no, it hasn't. Um, so then if you haven't done this already, you need to make sure you, you'll have to update your, your video files and things. So um, what I'm gonna do is say, I'm just gonna find one file. So I've got, I know this is the audio file that I'm using. Um, so I'm going to go to the audio folder, open it up, and I'm just going to drag my audio file in there. Um, oh, Lord almighty. Okay, come on. Let's do it. There we go. Um, and I didn't, I, I'm going to copy that audio file in there because I don't want it just in there. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. Okay. And then um, once I do that, I do have to go in and update where this is looking for the audio file. Um, and I'm wondering if I can just drop the actual file in this field, but we're gonna just do it this way. So I can go to touch designer examples and, oh, what did I call this? It starts with a D, I think. Oh, I think it's actually probably inside. Yep, there it is, okay. So then I can select that video file again, or that audio file, so now it's linked in the right place. Um, and then when you say I'm done with the project and let's pretend that I put these other assets in there, these other video files I'm using, which I haven't done, but let's pretend that I've done that. Um, what The way that you'll submit it is you'll need to go, um, to, sorry, I'm trying to find this. There it is. So I, I'm gonna need to go to the folder that's the project folder, right click on it and say compress. And then I should get a, there we go. I should get this zip file and that's what you would upload to Canvas. Um, and this is something we can go through again on Tuesday um, and then if, you know, you've made more changes by Thursday and you're like, hey, I want to make sure everything's right, we can also Thursday in class double check and make sure everything get us, gets uploaded. Because otherwise, like if those, if you use, are using video or 3D models or whatever, um, you can, uh, um, it'll, you'll have issues when you go to, when I go to run it because there will there will be nothing in those in those source those video ends or whatever. Okay, so those are the expectations for submission. I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial, and then if there, I want to go around and just check, especially with the Windows users, if it actually worked. <laughs>